just a disclaimer. As I was thinking about this sermon and sermon and going over it, and as I was doing that, I kept adding to it. And because of that, uh, we may not get to the Sunday night sermon. I may have to finish this sermon up tonight. Have you ever heard, and I would like to see a show of hands. Has anybody ever heard this statement? Speak where the Bible speaks and be silent where the Bible is silent. How many of you have heard that? I think most all of us have. Whenever we preach, whenever we teach, whenever we talk biblical matters with friends and family, we are always to speak what the Bible says. I want us to go over to the book of Acts and I want us to look at Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. We see in, in this chapter that Paul is at Athens and he's addressing a problem there. He's addressing a um, an altar, if you will. And on the altar was inscribed to an unknown God. And what Paul did is took that opportunity to preach to people about Jesus. And then he leaves Athens and he goes to Corinth. Look at verse 1 with me, please. After these things, Paul de departed from Athens and went to Corinth, and he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. And he came to them, so because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked by occupation. They were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded both Jews and Greeks. What was it that Paul was doing in the synagogue? He was preaching the gospel. He was preaching to the Jews and also to the Greeks. And when Silas and Timothy, verse 5, had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. The one thing that the Jews rejected, well, there were several, but the one thing that the Jews rejected is Jesus was the Christ. The Son of God, the one that was prophesied in Old Testament scriptures that was going to come, he was going to establish his kingdom, and, and the Jews rejected this. But when they, who are they? That's the Jews. When the Jews opposed him and blasphemed, he shook his garments and said to them, your blood be on your own heads. I am clean. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. And he departed from them and entered the house of a certain man named Justice, one who worshipped God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Then Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all of his household, and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. Now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a vision. Notice what God speaks to Paul. Do not be afraid, but speak and do not keep silent, for I am with you, and no one will attack you to hurt you, for I have many people in this city. And he continued there for a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. What do we see here? 
we see that, that God is talking to Paul. And he says, I don't want you to be afraid. I want you to speak up. Isn't that exactly what God wants us to do? Does not God want us to speak up and not just say anything that comes to our mind, but to speak the very words that are in the Bible? God says, don't be afraid to speak up. How many times are we as, as Christians at times afraid to speak, speak up because the majority of people that we are around do not approve or do not like what we would have to say. Sometimes I think that we are afraid. But God said, Paul, don't keep silent. I want you to keep on talking. And as Paul was teaching the truth, we see a man that lived uh, in Cyprus that was in a, of the temple, of the synagogue, believed what Paul had taught. He believed the gospel. So friends, when you and I preach, when we teach the Word of God, when we speak on a biblical subject, it doesn't matter what we think. It does not matter what we feel. It does not matter what we believe. All that matters on this is what God has said on the subject. That's all that matters. Now whether or not we believe it is up to us. Whether or not we obey it, it's up to us. As I said this morning in the Bible class hour, God uh, has provided a way for us to have forgiveness. God has provided a way for us to, to uh, come out of sin. No one forces you and I to sin willingly. No one, not even Satan. Satan tempts us. God makes a way for an escape for us, doesn't he? That's what the Bible says. But no one forces us to sin. We make that decision. So when we preach, teach, and speak about the Bible, we will always have to, we need to speak where the Bible speaks. Again, we don't need to be putting our opinions in on this. That's what's wrong in this world is that man has come along and said, God, I don't like what you said here and I'm going to put my spin on it and I'm going to change it up to where my people will like it. Friends, today God still speaks to you and I. And He speaks to us and tells us exactly what we must say, tells us exactly what, how we should live, and He tells us that through the written word. We have got it. And there's no reason on the day of judgment that we would, should stand before God and, and God tell us, how come, or ask us, how come you didn't follow my ways? I gave you the plan. I gave you the way. Why didn't you follow it? The only thing that we could say on that day is, God, I just didn't read it. I didn't see it because I didn't open up the book. Or I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it to be true. And I thought that you were all love and, and you would accept me the way I am. Friends, we should never be afraid to speak up And we should never be afraid to preach the truth. And if we do it in a very kind and loving way, hopefully that will fall on honest and good hearts. To ask the question, I need some more information. Share more of this word with me that I can get my life right with God. But if we are quiet, if we remain quiet, then I think we need to be shaken in our shoes. Because we are commanded by God to go into all the world. We are commanded to teach the gospel, to preach. We are commanded to baptize people. 
Then we're commanded to continue teaching them so that they will grow. And then they will go out and they will have converts. Friend, that's what evangelism is all about. But whenever we speak, and, and there's another way in which we speak, and that's our actions. And I believe it was yesterday as we were kind of talking a, a little devotional hour during the breakfast. I said, the one thing that will turn people away from the Bible, and they will call us hypocrites, is when we don't walk the walk. When we talk the talk, but don't walk the walk. You see, our actions speak louder than words. Our actions show that we really don't believe it if we're not following what God has said. So, when we speak, and we speak through our actions as well as through our language, we need to be speaking and living what God has told us to do. So what does it mean? What does the, the phrase mean, speak where the Bible speaks and be silent where the Bible is silent? This saying came about back in 1809. This saying was said by a man by the name of Thomas Campbell. And I believe, if, if I got my facts right, he was Alexander Campbell's son. You see, Thomas and Alexander Campbell both believed that we needed, that man, not we, that man needed to get back to the Bible. To follow the Bible 100%. Now, I know that some people call us Campbellites. But I'm not a follower of Alexander Campbell. I'm not a follower of Thomas Campbell. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. And I am committed to teach and preach and live the Word of God. Sometimes I'll make a mistake as well as you will. But that shouldn't deter us from keeping on keeping on. Thomas Campbell made this statement that we need the Bible and he urged everybody who heard him to use the scriptures to guide their path in life. So what does it mean to follow God's word? To walk the walk and talk the talk. What does it mean where the Bible speaks, will speak, and where the Bible is silent, will be silent? Well, open up your Bibles, if you will, to Romans chapter 14. And this is where I get a little wrong. <laughs> where the Bible speaks, we speak. Where the Bible is silent, we are silent. It means that opinions that man has about Scripture does not come into matters of faith. If we are not doing what the Bible commands, then we are wrong. If God has left the, uh, told us what to do, but hasn't told us how to do it, then that is matters of opinion. And God has left matters of opinion open for us what to do. Some people have taken this statement in Romans chapter four, uh, 14, and said, well, our weaker, uh, God doesn't say that we cannot use instrumental music or instruments in our worship. No, God didn't say not to do it. But did not God say what to do? God said to sing and make melody in your heart. In Colossians 3.16 and Ephesians Chapter uh, 5 and verse 19, we are commanded how to worship God in song, and that is by singing. 
We're told to make melody in the heart. The heart is the instrument. And some, some people will take Romans chapter 14 and say, See here, I don't want to make a brother stumble. Let's read. Receive one who is weak in the faith, but not to dispute over doubtful things. For one believes he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Let not him who eats despise him who does not eat. And let him who does not eat judge him who eats. For God has received him. The context of this chapter is about meats. Eating meats. During this time, there were some folks that believed that it was wrong to eat meat. Others, and, and, and by doing so, they had only could eat vegetables. And Paul writes, don't dispute over this. It's not a matter of faith. It is a matter of opinion. Look at verse 13. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. To dispute over doubtful things like this, to have a dispute over things that doesn't have any bearing on our living a faithful life, on us going to heaven, of us obeying the gospel, we are not to be doubtful or put to uh, argue, if you will, about these things. And if we have a brother or a sister who believes that it is wrong for them to eat meat, don't put a stumbling block in their way. As a matter of fact, one commentator that I, that I read on this said, don't even discuss it with them. Because you're putting a stumbling block in their way. Look at verse 14. I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean in itself. But to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Now this is talking about meats that was purchased at the temple that was offered to idols. There was nothing wrong with it. It was cheap. And the people could buy it cheaply. But it might cause someone to stumble. But if, yet if your brother, verse 15, is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. In 1 John, we are told to love our brother. If we love our brother, our brethren, our church family, we're not going to do anything that will cause them to stumble. Verse 14 has the idea of conscience. If I really believe I shouldn't do this, and God hasn't spoken about the thing, if I believe that I should not do it, and I do it, I'm sinning. Because it affects my conscience. If God hasn't said anything about whatever it is I want to do, but if God has said something about it, and I do it, I'm not affecting my conscience. I'm sinning against God. So you can see I can sin against God by just blatantly sin. I can also sin against God by going against my conscience. Look at verse 16. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of evil. Verse 19, let us pursue for the things which make for peace and the things which may edify one another. We are to build one another up. We are to support one another. We are to help one another. We're not to dispute over doubtful things, Paul writes. In John, I, I believe it's John chapter 17, or maybe John chapter 7, I believe it is. Well, I've got the 
wrong. I know it's in John. I thought it was chapter 7, maybe 17. But anyway, Jesus said, Do not judge by appearance, but judge righteous judgment. What is righteous judgment? Righteous judgment is what God has said. Righteous judgment is what God has commanded the church. God has commanded man to do, to have salvation, to have forgiveness of sin. That's righteous judgment. And by the way, when Matthew chapter 7, Christ writes that do not judge lest ye be judged. Man is not judging when they point out sin. God has already judged that. So, as we live the life, walk the walk, talk the talk, we are to do what the Scripture says. We are to follow the Scripture. We are to teach that Scripture. And there was another prophet. There was another prophet that God told this very same thing in a different way. In 1 Kings chapter 22 and verse 14, we see the prophet Micaiah. And Micaiah told a group of people that he was standing around and he was talking with and they were that they, they, he was encouraged to basically go along with the group. Because there were 400 other prophets that were prophesying for the king of Judah and the king of Israel to do something that God had not commanded them to do. And they wanted Micaiah to go along with them. As a matter of fact, they told Micaiah, when you go and talk to the king, just go ahead and say this. Sometimes maybe we are tempted to do that very same thing with friends of ours. But notice what Micaiah said. As the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that will I speak. Friends, that is speaking where the Bible speaks. And that is silent where the Bible is silent. Yes, Micaiah had God, God talking to him. But God does talk to us through the Word. Now the problem that we have is that man has taken God's Word and has changed it, has perverted it. So you have to make sure that when you study God's Word, you're using the things that help you fully understand what God's Word is saying. Because if you don't, you may wind up teaching something that is not true. And no doubt, there are people that are teaching error that really truly believe that what they're teaching is the truth. But then the Bible tells us there are some that know they're not teaching the truth. There was a preacher, I, I still know this pre the preacher, he invited <clears throat> a preacher friend of his to come and preach at a gospel meeting at the congregation that he, that he was at. And this congregation had a policy that before anybody could get into the pulpit and preach, they had to answer a, a questionnaire. And the questionnaire was just basic Christian questions. But there was one question about Matthew 19.9 and the question was, what do you believe about marriage, divorce, and remarriage in Matthew 19? The visiting preacher that was going to be there put down what he thought. He didn't agree with what the Bible said. And so my friend called him up and said, hey, surely you misanswered this. Surely you didn't mean to say that. He said, yeah, I meant to say it. You see, I don't believe it. 
But I preach it because if I don't preach it, then I'm going to be fired where I'm at. Isn't that what the Bible says to please men? Tickle me your ears. You see, friends, when we don't preach, if we don't believe what the Bible says, then we're not going to teach and preach the truth. As long as I'm alive, as long as I'm blessed to preach, and it may cost me a job in which it has already once, I'm going to preach what the Bible says. To the best of my ability, when I stand before you, I am going to have studied the, the text. I'm going to have studied the Word. I'm going to present it to you in, with, all sure, uh, with all assurance that I have done my best to be preaching the truth. And if I'm wrong, I ask you to point it out. I want you to point out where I'm wrong and how I'm wrong and let's discuss it. Let's see. Most of you know that Nancy's mother is in Christian care. And I've gotten to be pretty good friends with a lot of the elderly there. A week ago Friday... I went, stopped in just to say something to one of the elderly ladies that I, I like to talk to. She had cancer. But COVID had gotten a hold of her. And I couldn't go into her room, but I could stick my head in and, and I could say, see how she's doing and say hi to her. She told me, she said, I'll be glad when I get over this so I can talk to you. I said, I will be too. That was on Friday. On Sunday she passed away. I have no idea what she wanted to talk about. Because I, I teach a class. I do one day and the next day I do Bible trivia. And, I, and, and as I'm teaching, I try to, I, well, I don't try, I put in God's Word what the Bible says. So maybe I, I triggered a, a question or a thought from her. I don't know. But I will never know what she wanted to ask me. Life is short, friends. God has given us everything that we need to know for this life and how to go to the next life. Tonight, Lord willing, we will look at Micaiah. And even when he stood for the truth, even when he said what God told him to say, he was criticized, he was slapped, he was even put in prison. Because he stood with God. There will be times, dear friends, when we will be despised. We will, we will be hated. People won't like to hear what the Bible says. I, I told one individual, you know, it's, you see it, you understand it, you know what you need to do. I said, if you don't, I'm not going to hate you. I'm still going to be your friend. I'm still going to talk to you. I'm still going to pray for you. I'm still going to encourage you to obey the gospel. But Jeff, you know, if I do, that's going to make my family mad. If I do, that's just going to cause all kinds of issues in my family. Jesus said, he who loves father and mother and daughter and son more than me is what? Not worthy of. So, dear friends, as we close this part of the lesson today, <clears throat> let's make the point, make the promise that we are going to 
always speak where the Bible speaks. We're going to be silent where the Bible is silent. We're going to live what the Bible says. We're going to reject thoughts of men. We're going to reject our thoughts that what we want to do and we're going to submit to God in God's way. If we want to go to heaven, if we want to live in heaven after judgment, then that's exactly what we must do. Speak it, live it, and share it. Maybe there's someone here today that needs to obey the gospel. Maybe there's someone here today that needs to respond to the invitation and say, I've wandered back in the world. I've fallen back in sin. I, I want to come back to God. I want to speak where the Bible speaks through my lifestyle. That would be a glorious thing. Just like last week when Don and, and Coy were baptized. A great day. So if you need to respond to the Lord's invitation today, don't delay. Our life can be over that quick. Jesus could come back just as quick. So if you need to respond, do it now. As together we stand and sing.